to this week's of Chase Your Dreams. And as you can see by the Christmas stuff behind me, we're in the holiday spirit. So I wanted to kind of spend a couple minutes uh, with uh, me and, and uh, Kristen and Heather, kind of talking about a little bit about our Thanksgiving holiday, what we plan on doing, and, you know, just share a little bit of us with you. Um, how about you, Heather? What do you plan on doing for Thanksgiving this year? Well, it's definitely different, as we all know, you know. <laughs> Sadly, uh, yeah, we're still in the pandemic, but um, that is a, that's kind of shrinking down the numbers of people who are coming to my house. That sounds bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we're, we're just, we're practicing, like we're really like being diligent with the guidelines and being compliant to it. So we're going to mm -hmm. have just our immediate family over for Thanksgiving when normally we have like this long table with my whole mom's side of the family over and you know, it's just like you lean down and it's just people all the way and pass me the stepping three miles down. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be different, but you know, our immediate family has grown over the years with, you know, my little nieces and nephews. So we're still going to have a good crew over. It'll be fun. Very nice. How about you, Kristen? Well, I, this year for Easter, we did like a Zoom Easter. Um, and so that was challenging because I did the cooking for my, my husband and my daughter. And if you recall from when we had the chef on, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't cook. So um, that, was, <laughs> that was an experience for all of us. Um, but yeah, this year I, or this, this holiday, I think um, we are going to have immediate family. I don't think my husband or daughter can put up with my gravy um, or my burnt ham. So um, yeah, I think we're, we're going to go to my mom's house. And it's really nice because we always um, uh, say what we're thankful for, uh, you know, around the table once on, on Thanksgiving. And it, I really like it just um, because for, you know, the nephews and, and my daughter, they don't talk about what they're thankful for very often. Mm -hmm. So it's really great to hear like, you know, when they say time with family or a vacation, you know, they're planning or we're planning for them that it's, it's really nice to hear that they actually do appreciate those things. So um, I'm looking forward to what my daughter's thankful for, especially during the pandemic. So nice. <laughs> nice. Well, I know for <laughs> us, um, I typically make the rounds over to the in-laws and then also to, our family you know, to my mom's house. Well, this year, um, both of the moms don't want anyone in their house. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll be a little bit different this year. We're just going to stay home. Just us, just kind of relax. Um, I'm still going to make a turkey and all the other stuff. Uh, so it's actually going to be pretty fun. Uh, looking forward to the day after Thanksgiving to put up my Christmas tree upstairs. So yes. I am looking forward yeah. to that. <laughs> and uh, you probably haven't guessed this, but Christmas is my absolute favorite time of the year. I love mm. it. Uh, I can Great. do Christmas songs all year long. I know that sounds weird, but I love it. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I like, give me, no, no. Give me like a good four days of Christmas music and then I'm done. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for my, for my neighbors, I'd leave my Christmas lights up till April, but yeah, you know, they would get a little upset if it's I did. frowned that, upon. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, we're going to have a great show. Um, we're going to start off our show uh, with Tony, Minister Tony Johnson, who uh, is one of the owners of, um, of uh, uh, Switch Stitch Master Custom Tales. I'm thinking about Christmas and I almost forgot the name of our guest. <laughs> But as Stitch Master oh, Custom Christmas. Tailors, he's been uh, doing tailoring for over 20 years, very well known in his space, has some great products, great customer service, and we're going to meet him right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Chase Your Dreams. We are here with Tony Johnson, who is the owner of Stitch Master Custom Tailors. Tony, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, we really appreciate you being here as well. Okay. Um, let me start off by asking you, um, most people look at tailors as someone that just kind of does hemming and, and simple things mm -hmm. like that. Can okay. you tell us, what is a tailor? 
Uh, well, that, that, that just my occupation. That's what I do as a profession. I, uh, not only do I make clothes, I design them. I design everything that I, everything that we make, we design ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, I des- and I draft the patterns. So uh, from designing to pattern drafting, cutting, we, 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 make, we make everything. And then we do a fitting. And after we do a fitting, we do all the necessary alterations to make sure that the garment that we, that, I, that we made is up to the customer's expectation. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's basically from scratch to finish, okay? From nothing to whatever they want. And a lot of times these uh, things that they desire, they're not even made yet. So we actually go from what's in somebody's mind sometimes. Yeah, not even, there's not even a picture. So we have to go from what's in somebody's mind and we have to create from, from, uh, from an ideal. You're so like a what, fabric yeah, yeah. engineer. That's yeah, great. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that so that, so that's great. our next thing that we're working on is uh, producing our own fabric. So that's you know we're we're oh. constantly reinventing ourselves. Wow, very nice. That is so fun, so creative, and then you actually get to see people out. Absolutely, it's yeah. so great. Yeah. So yeah. what made you decide to become a tailor? Well, uh, it it kind of decided itself for me in uh, 1979. I started managing a store called Woolworth. I don't know if any you guys look like y'all too young to know Woolworth. It's I've called heard, Walmart I've now. I've heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So I was a manager, and and back then managers had to wear uh, dress shirts every day, and uh, neckties. So my my challenge is is always been that my sleeves are really long. The average guy's sleeve is 30, 34, 35. Mine is thirty eight. So when you have a 38 inch sleeve length, you don't you don't get shirts off the rack. Mm-hmm. So I started tinkering and tinkering led to tailoring and tailoring led to the business. And here we are, uh profession since 1985. Uh wow. 40 some um, yeah, 30 some years in the business now. Oh, Absolutely, nice. just from tinkering. <laughs> yeah. So I know you started tinkering. Um what type of education do you need or training to, to become a tailor? Well, you, you, you have to be, uh, uh, first of all, uh, there are some schools, okay, and I found out there aren't many, so we actually starting a school now. Uh, but there are, yeah, there are some schools. Was, there were some high schools that were offering tailoring. Uh, I went to um, a school over by Malcolm X College was a school at one time called Metropolitan School of Tailoring. I went there for a season. And, uh, you know, but I was already sewing. I thought I was going to be able to pick up something from them. But I went there for about a season. But most of my tailoring experience, I, I was self-taught. Oh, wow. From, from the beginning, I've been self-taught. Everything I do and learn, I taught myself. So you have to, that, wow. that's where I am. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow, nice. Yeah. Tony, let me ask you this. Um, sure. What type of person would be mm-hmm. ideal to become a tailor? Well, uh, a person that's a patient person, okay? It's, it's actually a patient profession. Uh, I get some people who come and they want, they want to learn real quick. You're, you're in the wrong profession. This is not a real quick profession. You know, you have to learn. You have to be very, very patient with yourself. Most people are not patient with themselves. They get frustrated easily. Uh, you know, they, they, they get turned off real easy. So I, I run across a lot of people that say, I used to sew, and I'm like, what happened? <laughs> they, they, they grew impatient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so. for someone mm-hmm. who is seriously considering a career mm-hmm. as a tailor, what would you say to this person? Um, I would say uh, take your time. Learn as much as you can. Uh, I don't see anybody right now. I don't know what happened. Hello? Oh, we oh we're still here. Oh, no, we're okay. still here. I can see you. You can see me. I can't see yeah. anything. I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to keep talking. Though. Perfect. I, I have a black screen right now. So. We'll let you know oh, if you can clear on us. We, we can I'm see not, you I'm, clear. Right. I'm not going to touch it because I don't, this is the laptop, so I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, 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 but by all means, if a person wants to do this for a, a career, I would tell them to uh, start now. Don't, don't mm. you know, learn some hand stitching. And right now you can go online. 
and you can learn, you know, different hand stitches and things like that. Most schools, like the one we're starting now, is online. So you can, mm-hmm. if you're willing to learn and be patient with it, by all means, you know, uh, go for it. But if you're not patient, uh, if you're in a hurry, wrong business, wrong mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So since we're in the holiday season, um, what does that mean for you? Does it slow down? Are you able to take a break over the holidays? It never slows down. <laughs> <laughs> it That's never good. slows down, right? Uh, I, like I said, I've been doing this since 1980, 80, uh, professionally since 85. In 19, uh, I had an accident and I lost most of my left hand. When I oh, went wow. into the hospital, a couple of people that I, that I was, did work for they called to the hospital. Some of them came up and they had one question for me. Could you, can you still sew? Uh, <laughs> not how, hey, not how you, not, not how, how you are feeling, you? not how you, can you still sew? That was, that was the only question they asked. I guess that's a compliment. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was a great compliment. Yeah. And actually, actually, actually I got better. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Got much wow. better after that. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, Tony, have you seen any any trends um, in in tailoring or in um, in fashion or whatever that affects what you do? Well, uh, tailoring is not for trends. Trends because it's it's a it's a patient business. Trends mm-hmm. trends come and go real fast. Mm-hmm. So tailoring is not for trends. Even though you may do things in trends, like right now, a lot of the guys like their pants real tight around the leg. You know, mm-hmm. tight pants. So what they're doing now is they're bringing me some of their wide leg pants and having the legs tapered. Mm-hmm. So, but sure. tailoring is, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it for trends and uh, because it take it, it takes a while to do the average, you know, average turnover time on the, uh, a custom made garment can be anywhere from uh, three weeks to uh, uh, two months. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Now you're talking about custom garments. What would be like maybe one of your favorites that you were asked to make and also one of the favorites that you created yourself, like your own vision? Okay. One of the things like the, like the crown I'm wearing, this, mm. this is called a crown. I, I make, this is how it all actually got started. Okay. I started making these and that's all I make. Sometimes that's all I make, you know, and, and, and uh, I ship them. Now we're shipping them all over the, all over the globe. Wow. You know, a business is global right now. And this is what they're, this is what they're, this is the number one thing they're requesting mm. is the crown, the kufi, the fez. Uh, in, in India, they call it a topi. So this is, this is what they, to this day, this is what they're still requesting all over the globe. Australia, Switzerland, everywhere. That's wow. so cool. Now, is yeah. there anything that you don't like about your profession or anything that you wish you could change? Um. Some right, right now it's kind of it's a struggle right now because a lot of the stores are limited. Some of the ones that normally shop that closed. So the only thing that, that really is frustrating right now is that I, a lot of the fabric that I'm getting now I have to order online, so I don't see it mm. only on a picture. Mm. Uh, so I don't get to see it and touch it before I buy it. So it's, I'm only seeing a picture. So sometimes I don't know what I'm getting <laughs> unless I know what the fabric is or I've, I've had the fabric before so that's the only thing that's a little frustrating right now with this but other than that uh and then the other thing is some people are impatient mm. uh you know they want it right away well wrong this is the wrong go go to go go to walmart we don't we don't do right we don't do right we, we don't we don't do right away right, <laughs> you know yeah. <laughs> yeah this is not that this is not that you know yeah if you want the quality we go to you right that's yeah, there you yeah. go Qu- quality craftsmanship uh, you know, uh, quality and fabric, you know, you're not gonna, you're not going to get what we're doing, you know, in, in the retail store. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tony, I appreciate you coming on the show. We, we definitely learned a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, we had a lot of fun with you here. Before- oh, thank you guys so much. Um, yeah. tell me how can people follow you and possibly purchase your products? You know what? I don't know if you see this because I, I still don't have a picture. I still have a black screen. So, uh, can you see that? <laughs> uh, raise it up uh, just raise, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, raise it up a little. A little, more. Little, more. little more. That's my, little that's more. my website. More, more, more. Okay. There we are. Oh, more, more. Right. Oh, more. Okay. Wait, there more information. Right there. there we go. Is the number <laughs> the last thing? The phone number is the last thing. Okay, the, cool. The, the first line is my website, and then that's my phone number at the bottom. 
Raise it up just a little bit more. Perfect. Right All right. Now go hey. ahead and tell us what it is. Okay. Uh, ATS wise, where I, uh, where we, uh, we, 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 we sell our merchandise there. Okay. That's where they can order custom order things. And, uh, you know, that's where they can, uh, we, we get, that's what, that's our global site. That's where all the global mm. customers come from is the ETSY. So we have about 500 pages on that site right now mm. with 500 different items that they can order, uh, from whole suits, uh, shirts, uh, neckties, men's accessories. Uh, and one of the things we, we, we are, we specialize in, we specialize in cultural attire and ministerial attire. So, um, they can order all of that on the ETSY shop or they can call direct if they're in the, you know, if they're in the area. Again, this is, this ETS site is global. So we do things all over the world. So they call, they call from everywhere. And right now they get a little frustrated with me because the mail isn't working so good. Mm. <laughs> so. Patience. Uh, but yeah. Patience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. That's great. Tony, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the show. We definitely had a great time. And uh, definitely welcome you back at a later date. Oh, I'm I'm awesome. This I'm honored that uh, you guys asked me, and uh, always available. All right, then. Great. Okay, so thanks, good. guys. All right, perfect. Everyone else, don't go away. We will be right. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are here with uh, Mary, uh, Mary Elena uh, Perrin. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, you did. <laughs> nice. Um, we are going to be talking about Zentegal. She's actually a certified Zentegal teacher, and we're going to learn what it is and what the benefits are. Mary, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. We are definitely happy to have you on the show as well. Yes. Can you tell everyone, what is Zentangle? Okay, Zentangle is a meditative art form. It was created by Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. Rick was a Zen monk. Maria was an established calligrapher, artist, and designer. They put their backgrounds together, and they took the Zen from his meditation and the Tangle from her artwork. And they created this easy to learn form and they copyrighted it. This is their logo. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Angle, they copyrighted it. And they began teaching it and writing books. And this was about 12 years ago. So Zentangle is Repetitive patterns that are drawn in a structured way, easy to learn, and they um, structure is, is just the beginning, but it's really about the process more than the finished artwork. It's the idea of slowly moving the pen, watching the ink flow, Usually there's yoga music on or some kind of meditative music. And the students work on a three and a half by three and a half inch tile. It's made out of this wonderful paper from Italy. It's called Fabiano paper. It's kind of like a card stock, but it's very wide tooth and it absorbs the ink very well. We start out in black and white, but a lot of advanced students add color. Um, we have a pencil with no eraser because there's no untangle. Whatever you put on the paper was meant to be there. Uh, we do a lot of shading. And at the end, we all give feedback, positive feedback to each other in the class. We take a photo of everyone's work it makes a mosaic, and that's the end of the Zentangle class. Um, we admire the beauty of every stroke, and our mantra is, what's our mantra? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> anything is possible one stroke at a time. 
Nice. Which is a good, good thing for life too, not just drawing. Nice. So that's untangle in a nutshell. Wow, I love everything that you just said. <laughs> that is totally uh, up my alley. I am, I'm glad to be learning about it today. Now, how did you get into Zentangle? How did you find it? Well, I had some slow beginnings six years ago. A friend of mine was taking Zentangle classes in an art studio. So I knew of it, but I didn't know how to do it or anything else other than that. And then my local library here in Crystal Lake offered a class with a certified Zentangle teacher. So I thought, oh, this will be a good opportunity for me to learn what she's been doing. She was all excited about it. So I took the class and I learned the basics. And then I pretty much, by her enthusiasm, went on Pinterest. And Pinterest had thousands of tangle patterns and tangle mm -hmm. patterns, which you can draw from yourself on your own once you know the basic method. So that's what I did. I began drawing on my own on little cards, which I got from the art store. Um, and then she gave me this book, Zentangle Mastery Series. She just gave it to me as a gift. It was a huge workbook. So I completed that in about, oh, six months or so. And then the library offered another class. So then I took that class the second year. And I took one other class at the senior center that was also offered by a different CZT. Those are the initials I'll use for certified and tangled teacher. And then something very serendipitous happened. I was in an artist raffle and I won six free Zentangle classes wow. at an art studio. So I was just in seventh heaven because huh? here I was doing it on my own for, oh, a year and a half by now. And I really wanted to take classes. So this was a wonderful opportunity for me. And it ends up that my friend was in the same class with this teacher. So I had a lot of um, camaraderie with the people in the class and the teacher was an excellent mentor for me. She really encouraged me. And after the six weeks were over, I was hooked. I just signed up for the next two years, going to her classes about every week or so. And I have a teaching background. I'm a teacher. So I taught elementary school and middle school. And so I thought, wow, I could teach this. And so I looked into what I had to do to become a teacher. So I went to the website, Centangle.com. And they have all the prerequisites there. You have to sign up a year in advance. They only offer it twice a year. So I signed up for October of 2018. And I did the year's worth of work that you have to do before you go. And the seminar was in Providence, Rhode Island oh, for cool. three and a half days in this luxurious hotel full of Zentangle patterns everywhere. You see them in the tile on the floor, you see them in the drapery, you see them on the rugs, the carpeting. Zentangles are just patterns. And you learn how to draw these patterns in such an easy method. Anyone can do it. Um, so then after I became certified, it was actually on Halloween 2018, I came home and I looked into starting a small business. So in 2019, I began teaching at the Senior Center in Crystal Lake, at the used bookstore in Crystal Lake, for my women's group at our church here and there. And I just loved it. I loved teaching. I loved sharing my whole passion about it. And I loved the practice. So, so as, aside from the creative outlet aspect of it, 
Um, what do you think some of the benefits are of Zentangle? Well, there's health benefits to Zentangle. Mm -hmm. It calms you down. It's very meditative. It does bring out your creative side. Um, it also gives you discipline because you're practicing something for maybe you're sitting there for an hour or two and you just zone out. You're not thinking of anything else. You're totally focused on what you're doing. So those are the benefits besides keeping your creative juices flowing. Uh, Mary, let me ask you this. Um, how long does it take to learn Zentangle? That depends. Some people catch on right away. Like with anything else, it takes practice. I would strongly recommend taking an introductory class from a certified Zentangle teacher first to learn the method and the process. Then if you want to continue on with the teacher or with another teacher, that's great. But there are resources out there for anybody to learn. On Pinterest, on YouTube, there's videos. On Instagram, there's classes. Um, there are books at Zentangle.com that the founders have written that are available in their shop. They have supplies. You can go to an art store to get books. You can go to Amazon, even Hobby Lobby. So the information is out there. Um, so there's a lot of information out there. Do you think that this is something that anyone can do or do you have to have a creative background or have been in the arts? Or no, it's for anybody. Right. No artistic ability is needed. All ages are welcome. Um, what else? Uh, there's four elemental strokes that you have to be able to do. And that is the letter I, the letter C, the letter S, and O. Those four strokes. All the curvy lines that we make and the straight lines we make are based on those four strokes. Mm. So just about anybody can do those four strokes. So that's why I say it's for everyone. That is so great, Mary. Uh, I wish we had more time to talk. We definitely learned a lot from you. Um, before we leave, can you tell uh, us and our guests, um, how can people get information on attending a Zentangle class? Okay, you can go to Zentangle.com. There's a directory. There are now 3,000 certified Zentangle teachers in the world from 40 wow. And the directory gives the contact information. Then you contact your local certified Zentangle teacher and take a class. The, um, the Crystal Lake area, like I say, I teach at the senior center, so all the seniors are, have access. And also the used bookstore in Crystal Lake, the Green Reed. So those two places are where I'm at. But I'm also in the directory with all the others, the certified Zentangle teachers. And I just want to say that my dream has become a reality. Oh, I am so happy to share my passion with other people. And it's just been a great ride. I'm so happy with this program. Thank you so much. It was definitely a pleasure to have you on our show, Mary. And uh, again, we welcome you to come back at a later date, okay? Okay, great. Thank you, Lawrence. No problem. Well, everyone else, do not go anywhere. We will be right back. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Chase Your Dreams. We are here with the great Rona Quartet. Woo! Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out. I'm glad that the weather is cooperating uh, and it's not raining or snowing or anything. We are very happy that it's not raining today. We got rained out yesterday. It was kind of miserable, but uh, <laughs> yeah. It was well, gross yesterday. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show. 
Um, I know we talked before the show. Can you kind of tell everyone about Rona Quartet, you know, about how you came up with the name and how you guys met and everything? Well, um, my name is Mary Jo, and this is Jeremiah and John, and the three of us have known each other for at least 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. Joanna's husband um, is an old colleague of ours from 20 years ago as well, though she's newer to the Chicago area. She hasn't been here for as long as we have. Um, but we're all professional musicians who all happen to play um, the horn. It's commonly referred to as the French horn, but there's nothing French about it. So we always like to <laughs> give people inside information, which is called the horn. I had no and, idea. Um, you know, when coronavirus came to the U.S. in March, the arts world went dark immediately. We all lost our work immediately. And by the time May rolled around, we were all hurting and not just financially, which is obvious, but socially, mentally, and emotionally. And so I kind of put a thing out on my Facebook and said, who wants to get together and play just in the backyard just for us? And these guys said, we're game. And so we started to get together and play. And what was amazing is it took about three rehearsals or so for us to mentally get back into like the professional musician mode. Mm. And it felt amazing that third rehearsal when we sat back and actually started rehearsing and saying, hey, I have an idea. Let's, let's get louder here. Let's get fast there. And I think we all sat back at the same time and thought, oh my gosh, I just feel like I just took the cleanest, biggest breath of fresh air. Like we just, we felt like ourselves again. And then people started coming by and saying hi. And so we thought, let's go to the park. So that's what we've been doing for the last eight weeks or so. We've been doing a show once or twice a week in the parks in Chicago and just kind of trying to get everybody that sense of normalcy and art back in their life. Nice. nice. That is so fun. And we all thank you for it. Yeah. Um, now you said that you guys have known each other for decades. How did you meet initially? Uh, well, Mary Jo and I were in grad school together at Northwestern. So we were uh, part of a class of five grad students together. So, you know, got really to know each other that year. And we're working together after that. And that same year I met John at a gig uh, that I got recommended for. And then Mary Jo started working in that same kind of orchestra circle. So we uh, were just working together in lots of different orchestras throughout the area after that. Nice. Awesome. So, okay, so we know that a quartet is, you know, four musicians or four singers. Why is four your magic number? I mean, why did you stop at four? <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. Three of us are actually members of a group called the Chicago Horn Consort, where we have about 16 horns on our roster. Oh. Oh. Um, but for four, for this, these are the ones who replied back. And <laughs> quartet is common, right? Yeah, everybody's kind of heard of a, a quartet. Um, there's a lot of music written for quartet, not mm -hmm. specifically for horn quartet, but string quartet and other types of quartet. And we like to steal music sometimes. Um, so it's really just easier. And the other thing that we had to look at in the time of COVID is can we play socially distanced from each yeah. other? The more people you put in this yard, the closer we get together. So mm -hmm. this kind of made the most sense for what we're able to do legally here in Chicago. <laughs> Very nice. Um, Mary Jo, let me ask you this. Um, I know within different types of music, you know, whether you're playing acoustic guitar, whether you're playing a violin, the drums, um, there's different styles and types of music. Um, how would you describe your style of music that you guys play? Um, we play everything. That's what's awesome about this group. I think John could probably um, talk a little bit more about that since he's an, a great arranger and has arranged several of our pieces. But I'll tell you, we played everything for classic stuff written for horn quartet to a piece my husband arranged by Lady Gaga. So, you know, we, cool. we do everything. <laughs> but wow. John can speak a little bit more about, about the horn quartet and the different styles. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do, we've done some spirituals. Uh, we've got a great set that was arranged by my uh, niece that's a music therapist. We've gotten two, two modern pieces written for the group that composers knew about us and decided we're writing a piece for you. One was by Rio Schwartz. It's a three movement piece called Three Bagatelles. And then, uh, and then George Flynn arranged, wrote a piece called The Gentle Horns. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. 
and, and he wants to sign an indoor concert series as soon as we can do so. So we've got some classics. We we've, we've got a lot of popular music and just styles in between. That's so awesome. That's so great. You have so many people who arrange music within your group and your, your like circle. Now, yeah. in the pandemic, how has this like affected your quartet? Like, are you guys trying to get out as much as possible or to kind of give your gift to everyone? So we've been playing in the parks mm -hmm. and um, it's affected our quartet in that we weren't a quartet like mm. this before it. So it's kind of a hidden gift, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've all talked about like, this is fulfilling a need and it's kind of nice to not have the pressure of we have to make it, this is for us. And that's, that's, a, that's a really nice gift to have. Having said oh, yeah. that, the weather's getting colder <laughs> and um, what, it's like 48 degrees out here right now. Um, yeah. So we're looking at what to do. We have some things in the pipeline. Um, the joke is I'm from Alaska and Joanne is from Canada. Jeremiah is from Minnesota, so as long as the guy from Ohio can hang, we're going to be out here <laughs> playing as long as we can. We even have matching gloves. Yeah, we have <laughs> matching gloves. Yes. Matching match. Matching match. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. I think I might be asking this question for Lawrence because he's talked about all the Christmas music he likes. Um, <laughs> but what are you guys planning for Christmas? Do you have plans to stay together and have Christmas concerts and... and <laughs> celebrate <laughs> we do like i i think there's nothing better than christmas music on horn i mean mm, come mm. on you put them on your tree you listen to them yeah. Yeah. so christmas um cards. christmas cards yeah. so we do we have some plans in the works right now um we're hoping to have a holiday special if you will um mm. complete with you know some skits and interviews and and whatnot um as soon as we can figure out where and how we can record if the weather cooperates and there's a few pop-up areas um, that we might be popping up with um, some shopping venues and whatnot. It's all hasn't been confirmed yet. So, but if you check back on our Facebook page, we'll post it all there when it's confirmed and ready to go. Oh, how fun. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Um, before we go to commercial break, I wanted to find out um, how can people follow you and possibly hire you for an event? You can go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com backslash Rona, R-O-N-A, Quartet. And that is short for Corona. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, everyone, uh, don't go away. We're going to go to a quick break. And Rona Quartet is actually going to play a song just for us and our audience. So Ooh, can't wait. Yeah. stay tuned. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Chase Your Dreams. We're here with Rona Quartet, and they are going to play a tune for us. So, uh, Kristen, what are they playing? Oh, I'm so excited about this. I'm a huge fan of show tunes. They are playing their rendition of I Could Have Danced All Night from My Fair Lady. Very nice. Everyone, <laughs> Rona Quartet. One, two, one, two. <laughs> Thank you. 
made my day. Very, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, uh, guys. We had so much fun. Thank you guys for coming that. out. And uh, we really appreciate you coming out in this weather to play for us, too. Thank <laughs> oh you. Oh, my gosh. So Thank great. you. Thanks for having us. Yes. All right, everyone. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Chase Your Dreams. We had an awesome show today. And we want to thank so much our three, well, three, what am I saying? Six? Six guests. Um, <laughs> we want to thank Tony from Stitch Masters Custom Tailors. And we want to thank Mary from, uh, our, well, our Zuntangle teacher. Very excited to research that further, I'm telling you. Um, and uh, the Rona Quartet for that wonderful song. It was so great. Yes. Absolutely. And if you do want to check out our episode again, you can find us on YouTube at Chase Your Dreams official video and just search S1E7, season one, episode seven. And also follow us on Instagram at Chase Your Dreams TV. Awesome, awesome. And again, as we are into this holiday season, um, definitely make sure that you stay safe, mm -hmm. um, have fun. Um, I know it's very stressful right now because of what's going on, but, you know, always try and find a reason to smile. Um, even though we're going through some crazy times, um, we can still smile. We can still look forward to the next day. And um, from Lawrence, Kristen, and Heather, we want to thank you for watching the show <laughs> and come back for our next episode. Chase your dreams. Welcome, everyone. I'm Lawrence, and I'm here with Kristen and Heather. Hi. Welcome to Chase Your Dreams. Where dreams become reality. We welcome you to watching our show. We are appreciative that you're taking time to, to spend some of your moments with us. And we want to kind of introduce you, the audience, into coming into our studio as far as other people that we should be talking to. For example, in our first segment, we talk about careers. Now, these are careers that don't necessarily require a four-year degree. Maybe you know someone that has a trade or a specialized type of uh, a career that most people don't know about that would be a good career to get into. Reach out to us and let us know. And in our second segment, we'll be covering mental health and physical health. Now, this could be anywhere from counseling to psychiatry or yoga and crossfitting. So... If you are a specialist or a professional in either of those fields, let us know. Or if you are an established or an up and coming musician, we want to feature you on our show. This is singer songwriters, cover bands, and any sort of music, musical artist, tuba players, we want to meet you. So please get a hold of us online or our Instagram at Chase Your Dreams TV. And our email address is so easy to remember. It's chaseyourdreamstv, all one word, at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you and also for having a great season. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everyone.